Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Debash Das, and today I'll be talking about how to write a scientific review article. Literature reviews are in great demand in the scientific fields. Their need stems from the ever increasing output of scientific publications. If you dread the thought of writing a review paper, or you're currently stuck in trying to write one, I hope that this video helps in the process. Just remember, you're about to become an expert in the field and you're the perfect person to write this article. Writing a review article is a great way for you to develop and exercise your scientific skill sets. In doing so, you increase your ability to read, to write, and to synthesize a large volume of scientific information into a coherent story. All the skills you need in your scientific toolbox. Although fame and press for scientists primarily come from creating original research, such as primary research, a key and timely literature review is also just as important because it is widely read. It also provides synthetic insights that allow the scientists to determine what are the current gaps in the field. For such summaries to be useful, they have to be compiled in a professional way. I think for a PhD student who is either just beginning their program or even ending their program, it is a great way for you to publish articles under your name, but more importantly, it allows you when you first begin out to find out what is known in the field, what are the current gaps in the field, and this will allow you to narrow your focus and also determine what you should focus on for your dissertation. In today's video, I shared 10 simple rules that helped me when I wrote my own review papers as both a PhD student and as a postdoctoral fellow. The insights and ideas that I'll be sharing with you today has not just come from me, it has come from discussions with co-authors and colleagues, as well as feedbacks from reviewers and editors. But before I begin today, I just want to let you know that by no means was I an expert in the topic when I first began. This is just to say that you don't have to be an expert either, you just have to begin. Rule number one is to define the topic and outline the organization of the review. So a good review has a number of telling features. It is worth the reader's time. It is timely, systematic, well-written, focused, and critical. It also needs to have a good structure. With reviews, the usual subdivision of research papers such as introduction, methods, results, and discussion are not always used or they are rarely used but a general introduction of the context and towards the end a summary of the main points covered and the take home message makes sense and it should be included. So once you start um, reading, there will be a temptation to include every piece of information that was ever published. Obviously this isn't possible. So define your scope from the onset. Once you pick a topic, try to be specific about exactly what aspect of the field you plan to review. If it's a well-researched field, you may need to get specific to make sure your article does not turn into a textbook. So it's known that most fields have a mountain of papers and scientists cannot be expected to examine in detail every single new paper that is in their interest. So it is both advantageous and key to rely on the most recent reviews of the field so I would try to stick to usually within the last one to three one to three years and here are some other tips to um, define and organize your topic the topic must be interesting to you so that you should have come across a series of recent papers related to your uh, field of interest that call for a critical summary to an important aspect of the field so that you will have many readers that will be interested in the review and there will be enough material for you to write on it. And three, a well-defined issues. Otherwise, you could potentially include thousands of publications which would make the review unhelpful. Rule number two, get the journal submission rules for the article. Regardless if you're submitting a review by invitation or by your own accord, once you have the rules such as the word count, formatting guidelines, reference styles, the number of figures and tables, you have some criteria to shape the document. The paper should include 
references to all the key published work worldwide to your field of interest. Typically, papers contain at least 70 to 150 citations, depending on the subject areas. And of course, the uh, regarding the figures and tables, it should be taken from past papers that are suitably acknowledged that illustrate the major points that are made in the text. Rule number three, get and use a reference management program such as EndNote, Papers, Mendeley. So you're going to manage a lot of references. I cite as I write which means that I use the softwares to add the citations in real time as I write. I've made a video on several citation managers, some of which are completely free and some which are paid subscription services. I'll add the link to it for you to check out. So things are going to get a bit crazy, meaning you are probably going to cite hundreds of references and it is better to keep your references organized from the beginning. I would also recommend using the citation style of the last name and the year in the document while you write because it helps you later on to remember where you read particular studies or experiments. Later on, you can easily convert the citation style to whatever the journal requires. So using the last name and the year format also has the benefit of exposing you to relevant researchers in the field. Also, you can sound credible and cool when you casually mention such as Das et al. showed that the AR expression was increased when you discuss the review paper with peers in the field. Rule number four, start reading. Search and research the lit. I started by reading other reviews because as I said, I wasn't an expert in the field when I began. Don't worry, you don't have to read every paper ever published to write a good review. To find reviews, I just searched online and I found ones that I thought quote unquote looked good by no definitive criteria. I read these articles to get a sense of the themes in the field and to learn what people cared about. I also used reviews to get a list of papers that I had to read. Once I had an idea of the themes in the field, I searched for the most recent research papers on these particular themes, for the most important papers in the field, and also for articles from the active or well-known researchers in the field. To choose the type of review you wish to write, you should take notes while you read, and so you'll have a rough idea of the amount of material available for the review. This is probably a good time to decide whether you want to write a small or a full review. Um, some journals are now actually favoring the publication of a short review focusing on the last few years with a word limit on the word count as well as the citations. A mini review is not necessarily a minor review. It may well attract actually more attention from people who just don't have the time to read a full-fledged full review paper. A full review, of course, does have the advantage of allowing you more freedom to cover in detail the complexities of a particular scientific development, but may then be left in a pile of very important papers to be read by the reader who does not have enough time to spare. Also, you can use other keywords and database sources such as DBLP, Google Scholar, ISI Proceeding, JSTOR Search, Medline, Scopus, and look at those who have cited past relevant papers and book chapters. You should also define early in the process some criteria for exclusion of irrelevant papers. These criteria can be described in the review to help define the scope. And also do not just look for research papers in the area you wish to review, but also seek previous reviews. The chances are high that someone will have already published a lit review on the topic you're focused on and if there's already a few or several reviews on your issue my advice is to not give up but to carry on with your own lit review so that you can discuss 
in your review the approaches, limitations, and conclusions of past reviews and try to find a new angle that has not been covered adequately in the previous reviews and try to incorporate any new material that has inevitably accumulated since the appearance of those review papers. Rule number five, just start writing. When I first started, I thought I would read a bunch of papers and that I would feel ready to write. What actually happened was that each paper taught me a few things and also highlighted a few things that I didn't know about. Instead of reading a paper and getting my bearings, the way I broke this cycle was just to start writing. So take notes while reading if you read the papers first and only afterwards start writing the review. So you will need a very good memory to remember who wrote what and what your impressions and associations were while reading every single paper. So my advice is that while you read to start writing down interesting pieces of information insights about how to organize a review, and thoughts on what to write. You shouldn't worry at this stage about grammar or formatting or, or continuity. Also, don't worry if you feel like you still don't know enough about the topic. Just get as many words down on the pages as possible. This could be in the form of lists, streams of consciousness, or anything else. In this way, by the time you have read all the lit you selected, you will already have a rough draft of the review. Of course, this draft will still need to be rewritten, restructured, and rethought to obtain a text with a coherent argument, but you will have avoided the danger posed by staring at a blank document. Also, be careful when taking notes to use quotation marks if you are provisionally copying verbatim from the lit. It is advisable then to reformulate such quotes with your own words in the final draft. It is very important to be careful in noting the references already at this stage so as to avoid misattributions. As I previously mentioned, I also added citations in real time as I wrote, so each statement was referenced even in the most rough draft and I didn't have to worry about having to hunt down sources after. So use a referencing software from the very beginning of your endeavor will save you so much time in the end. Rule number six, keep the review focused. Including material just for the sake of it can easily lead to reviews that are trying to do too many things at once. The need to keep a review focused can be problematic for interdisciplinary reviews where the aim is to bridge the gap between the fields. But for most reviews, a good way to organize the flow of the main body so that the reader will be drawn into it and can guide through it is to draw a conceptual scheme of the review. Such diagrams can help recognize a logical way to order and to link the various sections of the review. This is the case not just at the stage you write, but also for the readers if the diagram is included in the review as a figure. Don't forget to include citations so that people can go back and read the original reference for the data. So a good review does not just summarize the literature, but discusses it critically, identifies methodological problems, and points out research gaps. After having read a review of the lit, a reader should have a rough idea of A. The major achievements in the field reviewed b the main areas of debate and c the outstanding research questions it is challenging to achieve a successful review on all of these fronts so you may want to include some co-authors if that is the case rule number seven offer your own perspective it doesn't have to be long and it doesn't have to be revolutionary but you could include a few comments on where you think the field is going or what areas are worth exploring. But be objective in what you choose to include. In most cases, reviewers of the lit will have published studies that are relevant to the review that they are planning to write. So this could create a conflict of interest. How can reviewers report objectively on their own work? Some scientists actually may be overly enthusiastic about what they have published, which would risk 
um, in them giving too much importance to their own findings in the review. However, the opposite can also be true. Bias could also incur in the other direction. Some scientists may unduly dismiss their own achievements so that they will tend to downplay their contributions, if any, to a field when reviewing. In general, a review of the lit should neither be a public relations brochure nor an exercise in competitive self-denial. If a reviewer is up to the job of producing a well-organized and methodological review which flows well and provides a service to its audience, then it should be possible to be objective in reviewing one's own relevant findings. In reviews written by a few co-authors, this can actually be achieved by assigning the review of the results of a co-author to a separate co-author. Rule number eight, edit and rewrite then repeat. If you're like me, your rough draft is really, really rough and so editing is going to be a long process. I was very lucky in my own PhD that I had an advisor who was helpful in the entire process so I always had someone to send my drafts to who sent it back very quickly so it was a very good working process. That being said, we probably exchanged dozens of drafts of the manuscript before we submitted. This part is the perfect time to transform the document into something cohesive, change the sentences, make sure it flows, and start telling a story. Like any editing process, you will need time away from the article to be able to keep editing it, editing it effectively. You will also begin to hate the article. This is normal and it just means you're on the right track. Rule number nine, get feedback. Feedback is vital to writing a good review and it should be sought from a variety of colleagues so as to obtain a diversity of views on the draft. So after you are done editing, send it to some actual experts in the field for their feedback on the scope and the content. This may of course lead in some cases to conflicting views on the merits of the paper on how to improve it but such a situation is much more better than the absence of feedback. A diversity of feedback perspectives on a lit review can help identify where the consensus view stands in the landscape of the current scientific understandings of an issue. Rule number 10, submit the article. It is advisable to reread the draft one more time before a submission because any last minute correction of typos, leaps, and confusing sentences may enable the reviewers to focus on providing advice on the content rather than the form. After that is done, submit the article. So one of three situations can possibly happen after that. It will either be accepted, which is great for you, it will be rejected, or sent back to you with the reviewer comments. Try to incorporate the feedback from the reviewers will greatly improve a review draft. The reviewers may spot inaccuracies, inconsistencies, and ambiguities that have not been noticed by the writers due to rereading the TypeScript too many times. So it is very crucial that you try to address all of their comments before resubmitting. Overall, writing a review paper can seem overwhelming and challenging. My best advice is to don't overthink it. At the end of the day, someone has to write this review article, so it may as well be you. You just have to do it. To end this off, I want to paraphrase something that a lot of creative people say. You may not know what it will look like when it is done, but you will clearly know what it will look like when it's not done. So just begin the process. I hope that this video offers you enough insights for you to begin the process of writing a review paper and that offers you insights on how to go about it. Most importantly, just bear in mind, this is just a review article. This is not your life's work. It is better to be done than to be perfect. Until next time, good luck.